Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am your host, Doodleman149, and in case you didn't know, Embark Studios dropped a new seasonal update for the finals on Thursday. Join me as we take a look at all the changes we'll be getting before I give you my thoughts on each matter. Let's hop into this. A new map. The first thing we have on offer is something the community has wanted for a long time. A new map. This new map, called Horizon, is a glitchy, trippy mess caused by the final system being hacked by outsiders. Regardless of the story implications, it's refreshing to get a new map to play on and I look forward to learning and feeling how it plays. The new map has a very retro aesthetic to it and looks very different from most of the other arenas, so that's a nice change of pace. I haven't yet had a chance to load into a match on it, so it remains to be seen how well it plays. A new mode. Something else that the community has wanted for some time is a new game mode. This new mode, called Power Shift, is an escort mission style that you've probably seen in other games like Overwatch or Paladins. It takes your team of five players to guide a platform through the arena until it crosses your team's finish line. In addition to the objective of the mode, all five players on each of the two teams will be able to swap characters when they respawn so you aren't locked into a certain class if you feel a need for a different one. Gotta see how well this one plays out. Hey, it's Post Game Doodle here. After playing five matches of Power Shift, the mode has potential, but if you go up against a team that all sits on the platform, then good luck getting them off it. It's simply too defendable to take, even with an entire team attacking it. If they got an APS, dome shield, barricades, goo guns, and mesh shields, there's little to no way to force the enemy off the platform and claim it. It's definitely not something I'll stop playing quick cash for. New weapons. We've also been gifted three new weapons, one for each class. First, going light to heavy, we have the 93R, which is a pistol familiar to most gamers at this point. It's a burst pistol with decent long range accuracy for a handgun. It's given to the light class. For the medium class, we've got the FAMAS, which is in its burst function with no option to go full auto, so that seems to be the trend so far with these weapons. It should be effective at medium to long ranges with tight bursts and high burst damage. The final new weapon is the KS-23, which at first glance I thought would replace the medium's lever action shotgun, but it turns out that this is for the heavy class and it fires slugs instead of buckshot. I guess heavies had been lacking long range capabilities, but I'm not sure how well people will like using this over their auto shotty. Post game doodle here again, the FAMAS sucks balls, at least on controller. It's neither accurate in burst nor at range. Sometimes feels like the optic doesn't actually display where my bullets are going, and on top of that, damage output is not what I'd expect from a burst rifle, so fuck that gun. Back to the AKM and shotgun. The Heavy's new shotgun isn't good either. There's no reason to choose it over the auto shotty. It may have higher damage per shot, but with the low bullet velocity, you'll be out DPS by the auto shotty every day. It also reloads slower than the auto, and it doesn't allow you to actually ADS at all. The M93R is exactly what you'd expect. It has a pretty competitive TTK up close, but it suffers at range, where you think its higher accuracy would come in handy a little bit. I still think the SMGs and the L11 are better weapons. In the words of Fun White Kid after he used it for a few matches, that pistol sucks ass. New Gadgets there are some new gadgets for contestants to get stuck into as well. Again, I'll go light to heavy and start with the gateway gadget for the light class. This is a two-piece gadget that creates a wormhole from one deploy point to the other, very much like the gates in Split Gate, except that you can use it anywhere. This looks like it will make chasing an invisible light all that much more difficult, so who knows how this is going to affect gameplay. The medium class gets the Dematerializer specialization since Recon Census has been removed, and this allows the medium to temporarily erase physical surfaces. This allows you to walk through these spots, shoot through them, or move objects through them and then close them at will. This ability has three charges before needing to recharge, so I could see this being used for quick escapes or sneak attacks. They also gained access to the Data Reshaper, which transforms arena objects into something else. It can even turn hostile equipment into harmless objects. The Heavy gets access to the Anti-Gravity Cube, which does exactly what it sounds like it would. It creates a field of anti-gravity, allowing objects and players to float through it at reduced speeds. This can be used as a traversal option or as a tool to slow pursuers. If the cube is destroyed or redeployed, the anti-gravity field dissipates. Alright, post-game doodle one last time. The gateway gadget seems to be extremely useful for getting teams to distant places pretty quickly. It's very useful on power shift. The dematerializer is gimmicky, but it's actually useful when used properly. Will I be giving up my healing beam for it though? Not a chance. Also, feels like this should kind of be of a light gadget since it's a fairly stealthy one. The Data Reshaper is useful for quickly taking out enemy devices, but offensively it's meh. The Anti-Gravity Cube seems more annoying than anything, personally. All the new gadgets are things I likely won't be touching. A new Battle Pass With the new season comes the new Battle Pass, really the biggest reason to play. 
There are some decent cosmetics on display here, but still nothing that makes me want to spend any money on it. Are you interested in the Premium Battle Pass? Let me know in the comments. Introducing Private Matches Yet another heavily requested feature has been brought in in the form of Private Matches. In this barebones version of the Private Matches, you'll need 6 players minimum to either play Quick Cash or Bank It, so for the moment there are no Ego Challenges to 1v1 battles. Class Reworks Classes are getting some gadget reworks as well, so classes you previously had with certain gadgets may not be available anymore. For example, the motion sensor moved from the light class to the heavy class, the sonar grenade and the tracking dart moved from the medium class to the light class, and as previously mentioned, the medium class is losing access to recon senses and instead gets access to the dematerializer. Adjustments A number of gadgets and weapons also got some adjustments as well. Starting with the light class, the Vanishing Bomb got buffed both for the invisibility time of the user and the teammates, increasing by 1 second and 1.5 seconds respectively. The M11 got buffed hip fire accuracy, Throwing Knives got a projectile speed boost, and the XP54 got nerfed by decreasing hip fire accuracy while moving. For the medium class, the Defibrillator got nerfed by causing revived players to reappear over a 3 second period and increasing the charge time for a revive. However, it was buffed by increasing the revive health from 40% to 50%. The jump pad got nerfed by increasing the recharge time from 25 to 30 seconds. The AKM got nerfed in its damage ranges so it's less effective at distance than it was before. The F car got a minimum damage nerf and the revolver got buffed at its minimum damage. For the heavy class, C4 got nerfed from 2 pieces to 1 and reduced its minimum damage, but it has a faster recharge speed. The dome shield got nerfed by reducing its duration by 8 seconds. The RPG got nerfed by reducing hip fire accuracy, doubling ADS time, and by increasing equip and unequip times. The mesh shield got nerfed by increasing its recharge time from a fully depleted shield from 12 to 15 seconds, but its starting health got buffed from 200 to 250 health. The Lewis gun got nerfed by getting less accurate the longer it fires, while the M60 got the opposite treatment while increasing its accuracy overall. While not exclusively a heavy nerf, nukes also got nerfed by reducing the damage caused by subsequent explosives attached to an arena object. Overall, looking at everything, the light class got buffed yet again, the medium class lost gadgets in general and had its weapons nerfed, and the heavy had basically the entire class nerfed except for the untouched charge and slam, goo gun, some weapons, and a buffed M60. Some other stuff. There are some other minor changes I figured I'd mention. The preview grenade arc now shows where the grenade will detonate, toxic gas got nerfed by delaying the onset of damage, slowly having damage ramp up to a max, and then reducing the rate at which damage is taken from gas. They altered the algorithm to ensure players wouldn't play on the same map twice in a row. It looks like Modern Dice could really learn a thing or two from this. There's also a new training area on Monaco to help players get better grips with the game, and there's tons of bug fixes that you can read in the patch notes. Listing them all here would be both tedious for me and boring for you, so check them out if you want. Just a little note on the not repeating maps part of this, out of the four matches I played on launch night, three were on Monaco. Out of the four games I played on Friday morning, three of them were on Monaco. I don't think the algorithm is working correctly. And there you have it folks, that's all there is for the newest season of the finals. I'm excited to get back into the game after some time away and get on the challenges grind. We'll see how things go, especially with the medium nerfs, but who knows. Maybe the new game mode will grow on me, maybe the new map and the new algorithm for avoiding double maps will keep things fresh. I'm interested in looking at the new weapons, and I'm glad nukes are being nerfed. Are you excited for the new season? Will you be playing more now, or are you ready to start playing? Let me know in the comments below, and maybe we could squat up sometime. I've been Doodleman149, and until next time everyone, I will see you later.